everyone, I'm Mind, and I just got another issue of the Lego Ninjaga magazine. I feel like it's been forever since the last one of these I did, but I guess I've just had so many other videos on the channel. But yeah, this month's magazine comes with a Dragon's Rising Zane minifigure, which is super exciting. Not the rarest minifigure in the world, it comes in a $35 set, but he does only come in two sets, so it is definitely nice to get another one here. I'm actually very excited for the weapon though, that looks super cool. We'll take a look at the minifigure though later in this video, first let's take a look at the magazine itself, so I'll remove him from the cover. And now we have a better look at the full cover. It says Lego Toys Zane. Pew, pew, pew. <laughs> wow, facts and myths. Temple of the Dragon Cores. We have an awesome comic with the uh, sound effects Path Path and Spin. And then they're advertising the return of the Photak Beasts. Can the ninja save Imperium from danger? I assume that's probably going to tie in with the comic too. I'm actually curious to see that. What will the return of the Photak Beasts be? But anyway, now let's get this open and take a look at the first page. So, ooh, this is a new advertisement for LEGO. This is a LEGO City advertisement for some of the new 2024 sets. By the way, let me know in the comments if you guys want to see reviews of any of these. I covered this one because it's sort of like Ninjago adjacent. It's not really a Ninjago set, but there is Ninjago related things in the set. So I do have that video up on my channel. But yeah, if there's any other of these sets or anything else from LEGO City that you guys want to see, let me know in the comments. Because the LEGO City reviews do sometimes do really well for me, but there is a lot of LEGO City sets. So I want to know which ones you guys are the most interested in. Cool to see them mixing up the advertisement though, and it's not just the same one again. Then we have the table of contents right here. I was about to turn the page, but oh, we have a gigantic joke in the corner. How do you find out how much a dragon weighs? Easy. They come with scales. <laughs> That's funny. That's good. All right, now let's properly turn to the first actual page. So this is the bio page on the minifigure, the Ice Ninja Zane. Our cool colleague returns to the ninja team in episode 9 of Ninjago TV season 17. No, nope, that's 17. Where are they even getting that number, right? Am I am I losing my mind? Because even if you're going off the incorrect numbering, I guess what they're saying, Island is 14, Seabound is 15, Crystallized is 16, and Dragon's Rising is 17. They gotta stop with this. The numbering is too confusing. It's Dragon's Rising now. It's Dragon's Rising season 1. It is not Ninjago TV. TV series 17. Learn more about Zane's turbulent story here. United. After the merge, Zane disappeared. He was in a metal egg in the monastery under Imperium, but how did he end up there? Missing. Zane is back, but not everyone's so lucky. Master Wu, Jay, and Pixel are still missing. Will the ninja ever see them again? And then, of course, we have the instructions to build the actual minifigure, and Zane saying his iconic quote, Better go slow when you see my bow. <laughs> And then we have three mini games right here. We have a maze, we have like one of those light mirror puzzle type games. I know there's been like Pokemon games with puzzles like this. I think Legends Arceus, the Reggie Geekus puzzle is like this. Still a fun sort of thing to add here. And this is sort of like a Yahtzee type dice rolling game. Then turning to the next page, we have party planning. Let's go. <laughs> Ooh, that's a weird render for Eren. That's a strange face for him. That does not seem right. The victory over Empress Beatrix must be celebrated in style. Eren and Wildfire are preparing everything, but somehow nothing seems to be working properly. And this is a word search. This is kind of neat. You have to figure out which color to like color each of these letters. Then turning to the next page. What is this game? There's a lot going on here. Jay wants to game again, but he's stuck in the realm of the administration and nothing works there without forms. So first he has to dig through ninja high paperwork. Show him the way from start to finish and follow the correct sequence. All right, so you have to just get from start to finish while following this pattern. Cool that they're giving us little tidbits about Jay, though. Maybe this is going to lead into season two somewhere. Obviously, this is a very simple game. But I think either this magazine or possibly the last one is the first one that's like really taking place after the end of Dragon's Rising season one. So if there's going to be any hints towards season two, they're starting now. So definitely keep an eye out. And then we have Lord at Large, and this is a coloring page for Lord Roz. I guess they want you to come up with a new outfit for him for season two, and then you could draw your own weapon instead of his hammer. And then coming to the next page, we are actually at the comic. So as always with the comic, I'm not going to read the entire thing to you guys, but feel free to pause the video and read it for yourself. And if I notice anything especially funny or interesting, I will stop the video and point it out. But in this case, we have Flying Visit to Imperium, and it takes place after the victory over Empress Beatrix. Okay, it seems like they're setting up for the new 2024 Max. Obviously, we see them get made in the shorts, but here Sora's talking about wanting new parts to make new Max. That's cool to give them a little more backstory, I guess. Also, if you've seen my magazine reviews before, you know I love these Ryu illustrations, and he looks very, very funny there. <laughs> Why is his tongue just hanging out of his mouth like that? That's so goofy looking. Man, I'm gonna miss Baby Ryu a lot when he's not Baby Ryu anymore. All right, turning to the next page. Uh-oh, Ryu's been captured and Dorama's back. That's not good. Let's see what's next. <laughs> okay, so Dorama has reactivated the Photax, but instead of being like wolves now, they're hamsters instead. That's actually really funny. I do like that concept. That was something I thought when I was watching the show. Like, it would be cool to have more than just the wolves in the Photax. Like, the wolves are cool, don't get me wrong, but it would have been nice to see some variety. Hamsters are obviously a very silly alternative, but you know what? I think that's perfect for a comic. I really like that. 
But now we are, of course, at the break of the comic, so here we have a little bit more of the magazine as well as the posters in the center. This is Lloyd vs. Kai, and it's a dice rolling board game, and then here I can remove the posters. Alright, so here's the first poster, it's of Aaron and Sora, it's got the 3D renders of both of them, it says Ninja Students, Aaron Sora, Dragon Friends, Spijitsu Fan, Tech Genius, there's a lot of lettering going on there. I actually quite like the design of the actual poster. I think the colors especially are really cool. They've got like their illustrations at the back with like this filter over them, which normally I don't like the filters on the actual renders, but I think on the background it works quite well. And then yeah, both the new characters are front and center. I think that's awesome. But I do feel like they have way too much text down here. Aaron, Sora, that's cool, whatever. Ninja students, that's fine. But dragon friends and then Sora is described as a tech genius, which sure might be a little unnecessary detail, but okay. But poor Aaron is just called a Spujitsu fan. I think that's really underselling his abilities. But I think it's a fine poster overall. Nothing too crazy, but I do like it. And then on the other side, we have a poster for Jay. This is a part of a series that they've been doing for the past four magazines. Each one has a set and a different character featured, and this one is Jay riding on top of Jiro. A little funny since Jay hasn't appeared in the show yet, but still a pretty cool one. It's nice to have all four. I do like it overall. All right, back to the magazine. We have a What's Missing in its little pattern recognition game, and this is like a spot the differences, but you have to see how many differences are in each picture. Then turn to the next page, and we are back to the comic. Okay, electricity makes the hamster stronger. This is a very silly comic, but I'm kind of loving it. So Sora's overloading the hamster's batteries, uh, Aaron's attempting to do spinjitsu. Okay, and they free Ryu, and the hamsters can't move because they got too many batteries in them. And then Sora deactivates them with their elemental powers because, of course, they're Fotex. Yeah, overall a cute end to the comic. Nothing too crazy in terms of, like, lore or anything, but you know what? It was cool to see Aaron and Sora get the focus and not, like, some of the old ninja. It's cool to see Percival again. And, of course, I love little Ryu right here. I'm going to cherish every moment I have with him now that we know he's getting bigger very soon. Like, come on, just look at this little goofball. And while that's the end of the comic, it is, of course, not the end of the actual magazine. So turn to the next page, we have an advertisement for the Temple of the Dragon Energy Cores. It tells you a little bit about it in the show. This kind of stuff's cool, but it is basically just an advertisement. So I don't have too much else to say there. So let's turn to the next page, and we have Realms Galore. And I like this in the theory, but this is kind of just wrong. Because it's describing the Land of Lost Things and the administration as separate realms, which they're just not. Land of Lost Things, I can see, is a little more vague in the show. They don't specify it's not its own realm. But the administration is explicitly stated not to be its own realm. It's a part of the Realm of Madness. But yeah, here they talk about it like it's its own thing, even saying the Realm of Madness, or I think they call it the Dark Realm right here. That's a translation thing, because these are originally written in German. So yeah, I mean, it's cool to see these locations summarized, but it's really not like that necessary. It's just basically the stuff we've heard from the show. And then this is just a summary of the Dragon Energy Cores, and basically the end of the first season of the series. Then turning to the next page, we have Puzzle Panic. Yeah, they fit all these shapes in. That's cool. Advertisement for the LEGO City magazine, as always, and then we come to the very end of the magazine, and this gives us a little taste of next month's magazine, and this is going to be the first one based off the January 2024 wave, because you can see the cover's got the new Lloyd suit on it, and the minifigure is a January 2024 minifigure, one of the Wolf Mask Warriors. That's actually surprising, but very exciting. I wasn't expecting them to move on this quick. But yeah, it's going to be nice to have another way to get that guy. It's the full version of him, and the weapon looks cool. Definitely one I'm looking forward to even if the minifigure isn't the rarest. And I'm excited to see if there is going to be, like, any tidbits towards Season 2. And finally, in the end right here, this is a little landscaping cut out to, like, play with LEGO minifigures on. So all around solid magazine, I think. But of course, that's not everything yet, because we still have that minifigure to look at. So now let me get this poly bag opened up and put together the minifigure so I can review it for all of you. So here's the minifigure included with this magazine, all put together, Dragon's Rising Zane. And the first thing I want to talk about is that accessory, because yeah, this thing is so ridiculous, but I absolutely adore it. The magazine does this a lot, where they include these like really wacky weapon builds that LEGO would probably never put in an actual set. And that's my absolute favorite thing, because it's just so oversized and ridiculous. It just makes the poly bag feel extra special. It kind of reminds me of when I was a kid, like the 2011-2012 Ninjago spinners, a lot of the weapons in those were very unique too, because they wanted each set to feel special, so they put different weapons in each one. But to me, like, each weapon had its own lore, its own story, and I could imagine if I was a kid nowadays that didn't have a lot of Lego when I got this and I had this ridiculous bow for Zane, I would absolutely love it. So maybe it's a nostalgia thing, I don't know, but I just think this is so much fun, and I'm so happy it's here. But if you don't like big oversized weapons, well you still get two golden katanas as well, which those are of course always nice to see. And then the minifigure itself is really good. Dragon's Rising Zane's probably my favorite of the Dragon's Rising suits. Definitely up there for me, I do like a lot of them. But I think the blue on top of the white just pops so much, and the gray is the perfect accent color. The newer hood and armor piece are a little bit weird, but I think for these suits they're really good. If they use them forever, I might not like it as much, but for one-off suits like this, I think they're fine. 
And then there's a look at the minifigure with the hood and armor removed. So you can see the full face print. The one side of the face has like these dragon power eyes, which apparently that's what they're supposed to be. Not something that ever happened on the show, but hey, I mean, they look cool at the very least. But luckily it is a double-sided head and the alternate face is a quite good expression for Zane. It's just an angry stern face, somewhat reminiscent of his original 2011 face. But it's an expression he hasn't had on any other modern minifigures, so definitely one that's nice to get here. And back to us, the print, once again, very good. He's got that Dragon's Rising logo on the back, but with these ice shards coming off of it, and the blue once again pops so much on top of that white, and the gold in the center looks perfect. So, like I said at the beginning of this video, this isn't like the hardest to find minifigure in the world. It comes in a $35 set, and then also a $130 set, but that is only two sets, so this is now the cheapest way to get it. So if you're a huge fan of Zane and don't have this figure yet, this could be a good option, or if you just want an extra, it's good for that too. Obviously not the most exciting figure, we've ever gotten from a magazine, but still one I'm happy to see. I'm quite satisfied with it. And overall, would I recommend this magazine? I thought it was solid overall, but I don't know if you need it. This is one of those magazines that's in like that weird middle place where they're not really leaning too heavily into the next season yet, but it's been a long time since the previous season, so they're just sort of filling in the gaps. I do think for kids especially it's fun, right? Like I think a lot of the games in there are pretty good. I feel like the games have actually been getting better. They went through a phase where it's just the same games over and over again, and I mean, yeah, there's still a lot of that. I don't know, it seems like they're innovating a little bit, which is good. It's nice to see them keep like such a simple medium so interesting. The comic was fun, but it's nothing too crazy. And the minifigure is good, so if you don't have it or you like the really cool weapon, sure, pick it up. But it's not super rare or anything, so I'm not gonna say like, oh, don't miss out on this one, because if you skip it, you're perfectly fine. So yeah, not one that like I super recommend, but I think it's a pretty solid magazine. I'm fairly happy with it. But of course, those are just my thoughts. Let me know what you guys thought of this magazine in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like on it, subscribe to my channel if you're new, and I will see you all in the next one. Bye!